Hi guys, it's Diane Macedo, ABC News anchor correspondent, former insomniac, and author of The Sleep Fix. And today I wanna to share a few ways you might be sabotaging your sleep without even knowing it. The first problem I see is people striving for sleep perfectionism. This has become more prevalent with sleep trackers because it's easy to get caught up in trying to get the perfect sleep score. But all that pressure you're putting on yourself to sleep in a certain way can make it harder to sleep. If this sounds familiar, I have a few tips for you. Number one, instead of focusing on sleep performance, focus on your relationship with sleep. Because just like in a human relationship, if you're trying too hard, if you're being too rigid, if you're trying to force sleep to happen in a certain way, sleep's not gonna wanna hang out with you anymore. So one crucial piece, ironically, to fixing your sleep is learning how to relax and let go. Tip number two, ditch the sleep tracker. And don't get me wrong, sleep trackers can be a great tool, but not if they make you obsess about the details of your sleep. Instead, just do a daily check-in with yourself. Ask yourself, how do I feel today? Do you feel sleepy all day? Do you feel like you need a nap or like you could just doze off if you were to sit down? That's a sign you're not getting enough sleep, no matter what your sleep tracker says. And if you feel like you're fine, your energy levels feel pretty good all day, that's a sign you're probably getting enough sleep. Tip number three, look at sleep as weekly, not daily, because we all have a bad night here and there. But it's when you look at the big picture that you can start to see what works for you and what doesn't. I love a sleep diary for this because you can focus on the basics, things like what time you went to bed, how long it took you to fall asleep, how long you were awake overnight, what time you woke up in the morning, and then you can also make notes on anything else you think affected your sleep. Another common sleep problem that I confess I'm guilty of is staying up too late for the sake of getting some time for yourself. So for example, you might know it's bedtime, but you end up scrolling Instagram instead for an hour. Guilty. Now this may feel good in the moment, but it doesn't feel good the next day when you wake up and you're exhausted. And then it becomes a cycle because the next day you feel more rundown, you're more prone to stress, and then at night you feel like you need even more me time to unwind. My number one tip for this, the audio fix. Find an audiobook, a podcast, or anything else relaxing that you like to listen to and incorporate it into your bedtime. Just set that audio on a sleep timer and then listen to it as you drift off. Tip number two, the last call alarm. The last call alarm is your way of telling yourself, hey, wrap up whatever you wanna get done today or officially put these things off for tomorrow. That can help prevent you from having your to-do list just swirling around in your head all night. Tip number three, breather boundaries. Choose activities to take that breather that have a definitive end to them, like watching an episode of a TV show or completing a puzzle. This gives you a sense of completion as opposed to scrolling social media endlessly or playing a never-ending video game. You can also set a timer for say 30 minutes before doing that activity. So now you can still enjoy scrolling Instagram or playing that video game, but now you're gonna get that gentle nudge from the timer when your 30 minutes are up to check in with yourself and realize it's time for bed. And the last way you may be sabotaging your sleep, I'm sorry to say, sleeping in on weekends. If you sleep in a lot on weekends, your body basically thinks you travel to a different time zone and it adjusts to that. Scientists actually call this social jet lag. This makes your body start sending you sleep signals later at night and wake signals later in the morning. Then come Sunday, you try to go to bed at your usual time and you have a hard time falling asleep and you wake up Monday morning feeling terrible. Tip number one, the 45 minute sleep in. Statistically, people tend to still do okay as long as they sleep in for less than an hour. So if you had a rough night, you went to bed late, set your alarm for at most 45 minutes after your usual wake time. Tip number two, a well-timed nap. Ideally, you wanna wake up at your usual time and get two hours of sunlight or bright light. That's incredibly powerful to setting your body clock. Once you do that, you can usually take a nap without much impact to your circadian rhythm. Tip number three, an earlier bedtime, but you don't wanna go overboard here. Think 15 to 30 minutes early, not two hours early. And most importantly, only go to bed early if you feel sleepy at that time. Tip number four, do nothing. To a certain degree, our bodies automatically recover from sleep loss. So let's say last night you didn't get as much sleep as you needed. Well, tonight, when you go to bed at your regular time, your body is going to prioritize REM sleep and deep sleep over light sleep, and you'll sleep more efficiently, which means even if you spend the same amount of time in bed as usual, you're actually getting more sleep than usual. I hope these tips are helpful so you can all start getting better sleep tonight.